Today we are leaving the Orlando orbit and heading to the Florida Panhandle. This feels like another one of those milestones, kind of like when we went to Tennessee and we said now we're really like out of the Northeast and out of our where we've been living in our comfort zone. This is another one of those because we've been to Florida so many times that this also feels homey to us. And the past, we've been here for six weeks since we arrived at Flagler Beach. It's kind of just felt familiar and homey. Now we're heading west across the Gulf states and this is gonna be brand new for us. is the strangest experience that we have had yet. Um, when we drove into the campground, there was a lot of visible damage to the campground buildings. Uh, the roof was blown off of the rec hall, the, the sheds and maintenance things that were around were just dilapidated and uh, falling apart. And there wasn't even a sign out on the road for the campground. We had, you know, we were just following Google Maps. But the person who checked us in explained that uh, there was a lot of hurricane damage around here in this area. And I said, from what hurricane? And she said, Hurricane Michael, which was years ago. Um, it was actually, I, I thought older, but it was two and a half years ago, in October of 2018, Category 5 Hurricane Michael hit Panama City and uh, decimated this whole area. What we've been learning over the past few days is that this area has so much poverty in it we're just seeing as we're driving around the town and the roads just you know shacks trash in the yards so number one this hurricane destroyed the area number two the people were too poor to rebuild um, except for down in Panama City Beach was the, is the big tourist area that's all been repaired and then we were tr walking around the campground um, you know the next day after we checked in and we noticed that many of the rigs that are there are very nice there's little cabins there and you know uh, RVs that are there for the season that have porches and furniture and stuff and they're not trashy so um, we're tr kind of trying hard to figure out what's going on there but I think it's probably simply a lack of money to repair things at the campground that it also looks like they had plans to do a major expansion the brochure that we got when we checked in indicated a large area uh, that was going to be new sites. There's a little fishing pond there. We can see lots of electrical posts that have been put in, but no one is using the sites. So we're speculating that before the hurricane, there was this big improvement project underway. The hurricane hit, and then someone either, you know, couldn't afford to finish the project or abandon it or whatever, but a, a really odd experience for us this week. Like here, you can see the campground is right back there where we're staying. They've um, made this road here that goes all the way down the tree line of this really far. And you can see that they've cut roads in the trees that are now grown over. I mean, this growth is probably maybe a year or two, um, but there's roads all along here. So they've already planned and cut in their roads and then it all just stopped. <laughs> it's so strange. And really sad because uh, this seems like a, a nice little campground and uh, the woman here is so nice who's checking us in but she doesn't have anything to do with the management or the plans or anything so she she doesn't have a lot of information to share um, other than to say that she doesn't know what's going on and it's been this way as long as she's been here and she just assumes that it's all due to the hurricane. Jason was saying that if this was what RV life was having to stay at these kind of campgrounds then you know, you would you would quit after one week. <laughs> but we've been at so many beautiful places and uh, lovely campgrounds that it's no big deal for us to stay here for a few days. But I'm glad that this is not what RV life is. So you know that we're part of, there were Thousand Trails members and we've been mostly staying at Thousand Trails Parks. Um, there's a sub membership of that that we paid just $160 a year for called Resort Parks International, RPI. This is the first RPI park that we have stayed at here in the Panhandle and the next two or three are also RPIs. So we're gonna be interested to see if the quality of them overall is a little bit lower or if it's just this park. Yeah, and there's no thousand trails in those spots. So right. that's, that's it, part of why we got that. Is it filled in the gaps across the Gulf states? Mm -hmm. And I think somewhere kind of in the middle of the country more so because Thousand Trails is heavily concentrated, uh, you know, 
mostly more than half on East Coast. The next biggest group is on the West Coast and then a little bit around uh, whatever the Great Lakes to some extent, yeah. but very little else. Uh, Texas has another concentration yeah. as well. Um, so since our plan was to go up through the middle of the country after leaving Texas, and across the Gulf states where there was no Thousand Trails. We thought this RPI for a year um, would be a good experiment and kind of fill in some of those gaps yeah. along the way. And we're happy to explore, even if, you know, even if it's not the prettiest or the nicest or the most interesting things to do, it's still, Jason just said, there's always something. It doesn't matter where you are. There's always something to see and learn and experience from where you are. So today we're driving down this orange yeah, dirt road. we're in some road. forest management, recreational, dirt access road area. We're gonna That's go there. find a pond. Nice. When we used to live in Rochester, New York, when our kids were little, um, we loved driving around the Finger Lakes and we had this little geo prism and uh, we used to drive on these kind of small dirt roads all the time and we haven't done it a lot in the dually because it's harder in a dually and Matt, right now we're passing this truck and it's really tight. <laughs> exploring even the most unlikely places, especially the most unlikely places. We've been some places that probably this truck shouldn't have been, let alone a geo prison. Yeah. <laughs> we never got stuck. Oh, it says to turn left and the gate is closed. Well, that way was a bus, but we've seen three trucks now coming out of dog eight, whatever that means. And Google Maps says we should be able to go this way, so let's try it. This road is a little more rutted than what we've traveled on so far, so Jason's just walking out to see how compacted it is. We have four-wheel drive and a dually, so we could probably climb out of any soft sand, but we don't want to risk it unnecessarily. Oh good, the gate's open here, we can get out. Not always a guarantee. No. You sometimes drive a real long way and then you, you find to out you're going to drive it again. Our sticks and bricks house I did a fair bit of sewing and not clothing but household sewing uh, mostly making curtains and pillowcases and shams and um, upholstery and things like that so I knew that when we came into the RV I definitely wanted to have a sewing machine and it wasn't practical to big my bring my big machine so I bought this little mini machine from Singer um, I haven't used it yet since we've been in the RV, but now I have a few sewing projects that have stacked up. So I'm gonna work on them here at my desk. I cleaned all of my computer stuff off and this is gonna be my sewing table for the weekend. Uh, when we were at Disney World, I was very excited because my plan was to buy a new set of dish towels. I've been needing dish towels forever. And I kept thinking once I get to Disney, I'll buy a cute set of Disney towels. Well, we didn't see anything there that we liked. There, there were a few uh, dish towel sets there, but just no patterns or fabrics that I liked. And also they were super expensive, like $20 for one dish towel. So I had this idea. I thought I'll go to Joanne Fabrics and I'm sure they've got tons of Disney prints there in the Orlando stores, which they did. And I picked out this little Mickey and Minnie Mouse uh, soft fabric. So I'm going to make some dish towels out of that. Another little project I had on my list was uh, to make some covers for some mini pillows. Jason and I love using little mini pillows all over the place. We've got about six of them in the RV and we just use them on our laps for our laptops or I use it in bed to prop up my 
phone if I'm watching a show or something. Um, but Jason was saying the other day that he would like to have some that had outdoor fabric on them so that he could use them when he's sitting outside and working in the camping chairs. I found this adorable camping RV fabric that's for outdoors. So we're just gonna do some sewing projects here in the RV. One Disney dish towel. I'll make three more. And I'll have a little set for about six dollars each. We've driven down here to Panama City Beach, which is right along the Gulf Coast and we're just gonna wander around here and drive up the coast a little bit today and see what we can see. It looks like uh, right now we're at Pier Park, which is a kind of a well-known shopping area and this big pier out into the water. Panama City is well known for its white sand beaches and this is a beautiful uh, dog beach here. Lots of activity today. to drive past a uh, Bass Pro Shops here in Destin, Florida and we're gonna go inside because we've never been in one and you may not know that in addition to places like Walmart and Cracker Barrel, Bass Pro Shops is a place that you may be able to park your RV overnight in the parking lot. This particular one does not allow overnight parking um, so you have to check each time but Cabela's and Bass Pro Shops are potential free parking lot surfing. Yep. And, and that's a bonus. We read dogs that they allow dogs in there so we're gonna go see. Well, it's moving day. This is not going to be pretty. <laughs> it's a little bit wet out there. Titch rain. <sighs> it's just water. The rain finally let up a little bit, so we're gonna pitch up quickly before it starts again. Well done. That was that was a good experience, honestly. Though, I mean, I'd pick not torrential rain, uh, but it was good to figure out what to do and checklist and double check what you're doing so you don't get ahead of yourself. That was good. We didn't even uh, yell at each other, which is which is what. Which is not too loud. If we kept our voices very low. <laughs> I'm sorry for what I said when we were parking the RV. Well, that was a little bit of a different episode, but like we said, no matter where you are, there's always something new to discover and experience. So while we're traveling around the country and seeing many of these things for the first time, we're just keeping an open mind and enjoying whatever situations we find ourselves in. But before you leave, I wanted to take a second to tell you about some new playlists that I made on our YouTube channel. If you go to the Circuit Riding RV channel and hit the playlist tab, 
you'll see that I've grouped our videos by regions of the country. So maybe if you're planning a trip and you wanna know some fun things to do in that region, or you're wondering how in the world you can navigate New England in an RV, you can watch our playlist from those areas. There's also a playlist called Life on the Road that's just about general RV life. So if you're more interested in how we live in the RV, those videos are grouped together as well. Just makes things a little easier to find if you're searching for a certain topic. So that's it for this week. As always, thanks for watching. Hit that subscribe button and we'll see you next week in Alabama. Bye.